Hey, what is going on, guys? Talk Nerdsity here, back for another week of the TNC podcast. Once again, no guest, um, mainly due to me slacking and Loneliness. not asking guests on. Uh, but we do have a quite exciting few weeks coming up um, in terms of guests. We've got mm. the East Anglian Derby next weekend. Might have something lined up for that. And going forwards, well, you know, we've got tons of guests lined Anything up. Anything can happen. You. Dare to dream. Mm. Yeah, and I told you, dare to dream. And we dreamed, and we won't beat Middlesbrough. By the way, great result. Great result. Uh, also, Doritos tonight. Now, you are the Doritos and Nando sauce combination oh. man. You created it. You... You live by it, you, you sleep by it. Now, Doritos with a hint of lime. Mm. Never never had these before. Didn't even know they existed. Quite good. To be honest with you, Doritos with lime have just come into my life. Have they? I'm normally a lightly salted man. Cool original, there's just way too much stuff on them. Mm. But a hint of yeah. lime is just... Mwah. So what changed you from being a, a lightly salted man then? Well, I just, I, I just consume a lot of uh, Doritos mm. and Nando's Peri Peri sauce. Medium, by the way, if anyone wants to know. Give it a try. Here's the sort. By the way, this is the pot. If you want a bit of behind the scenes action, mind the crystals don't fall over. So what, what changed you then from lightly salted? To, as, as I say, I've just, I've just, no, I've just eaten so much that right. I just needed a change. How's your week been anyway? Very good, mate. Very, good, very good. good. I think uh, in general, when Norwich win, I think I just feel better. Yeah. The whole city thrives. Yeah, <laughs> it's superb. Yeah, the city does feel the wheels turn today. It does. I was in the um, I was in the Virgin Money Lounge today, getting my free coffee. Oh hello! And, um, you? People were just buzzing. Pretty good, pretty good atmosphere in there. Was it getting lively? It was very busy. There was a lot of oldies consuming their free coffee. Good, Norwich uh, City. Mm. We did Middlesbrough. Yeah, Tom. we did. Um, where should we start? There was a lot going on. First of all, let's again just pay homage to the fact of the fact you know, Michelle. Mm. So lovely for Ethan as well. Um, I think that. It meant so much more than just three points at the weekend for, for many, many people. Um, you know, I was just reading, you know, what one of the uh, producers at Radio Norfolk, Richard Hancock, he, mm. he tweeted out today saying that he couldn't even kind of get himself together for On The Ball City. And I think it just that shows that, you know, just how emotionally charged it was. And, and honestly, it felt like the atmosphere was so much more. <clears throat> yeah. Got that spicy sauce is there. But the atmosphere was uh, just so much better at the weekend because I felt like everyone wanted it more. The fans came together, the players came together, everyone was together. And and if you want to define Norwich City as a community club, I, I think I think they showed yeah, it at the weekend. Hundred percent. And I think there've been times this season as well when you kind of you, you turn up to Carrow and you've said it yourself. It sometimes feels like a, a little bit of a chore, and you, mm. and you wonder why you spend so much money. You wonder why you spend so much time following this football club. You never quite pinpoint it at times. But it's times like at the weekend when everyone pulls together and, you know, we, we win and, um, you know, that support network is there. And I think it kind of makes you realise why we go back to Carrow Road and why we support such a fantastic club. Definitely, yeah. Um, the game itself, though, was was routine. And I don't think we've said that all season. Mm. Um, a professional routine performance in which we picked up the three points. We kept the 12th clean sheet yeah. in the league of the season. And... Um, picked up 75% yeah. possession yeah um, and, and Leitner on his own had what was it 17% possession in, in the second final half. 15 minutes I think okay that just says it all doesn't it mm. I think for me there's, there's two kind of well three defining factors of that result of the weekend one I've already said it in my post-match reaction mm. my fan cam <coughs> the, the uh, are you alright mate tempo, tempo was, did the tempo get to you that much tempo. spicy that was a bit of the lime actually was it Mm. Are you all right? That teaches us Have a drink. There, Have it? a drink. Anyway, everyone's going to be laughing at us now. Um, <coughs> oh, cracking. Tempo was fantastic. Mm. Absolutely fantastic. Why, was, why did it change, do you think? Uh, well, I, I think it was down to the players being told to. I, I think because you, cause you got Tete in there, yeah. who historically has been very good at calming things down, controlling the game. Mm. Um apart from his woeful back pass to Angus the other week, but I, I thought he was brilliant. And, and the tempo, the, the way that we just kept everything going, it was like less than a second and a half mm. on the ball. It was mm. brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, so that was one key defining factor. Another thing, not being pessimistic, I, I don't think Middlesbrough turned up. Mm. I don't. And I, and I look at the Middlesbrough side, and I, and I do mean this, and I'm not going to you know just dive into Middlesbrough, but 
I would be so, so disappointed, probably more disappointed as a Middlesbrough fan this season mm. because they're in their first their first season of the of the parachute payments. Yeah. They've got players there of star quality. You know, you've got I question British Brit Sombolonga not starting. Yeah. I really do. I, obviously, I don't know the ins and outs of Borough. He might have not played the week before. Especially he might be when injured, but the other option, is, well, is Rudy Gestead, but also Patrick. Bamford don't tell as me well. Patrick Bamford should be starting. Like he, he shouldn't. Terrible. But anyway, I don't. Course, no offense, but I don't care about about Middlesbrough. But what I do need to make clear is that I don't think Middlesbrough presented anything of 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 excellence against Norwich. You say that, and I, and I do agree. I think. Tony Pulis' decision not to start Son Malonga was questionable. Even more questionable not to start Johnny House. Who oh, been what is that all about? Really up for it. There was a few people saying at the weekend, and I kind of see where they're coming from, that they were a bit bored by it. it not not slagging it off. It was a good win, but some people were saying they were bored by it. For they're me, bored by it. We won at home, finally. For me, though, it, it, it was almost a tactical masterclass from Daniel Farker because at 1-0 up, you could quite easily really go off and try and kill the game and at times us as fans are going we need a second we need a second yeah, we need I a second. Was. yeah. but then you run the risk of getting hit on the counter mm. we saw Adama Traore who looked very very good mm. especially when they had 11 men to be fair their only glimmer of hope if um, if they hit you on the counter from 1-1 they put 10 men behind the ball and it's very tough to then go on and get the win what we did so well as you say we held the ball we had the tempo and it was almost like Middlesbrough mm-hmm. just simply mm-hmm. chasing mm-hmm. shadows in the second half I can't remember a clear shot on goal when they did have the ball in our box. Angus mm, sweeped it up. Yeah. The defence was astonishing once again. A couple good of great were. little uh, three balls from Angus oh. the weekend, by the way, which, which well, arguably we should have scored from at the end. And it was funny, wasn't it? Because I was, I was slagging Angus as kicking off in the first half. Yeah, saying, I made sure I got... I clip, Angus, I clipped around the ear for that, don't worry. I turned around and went, Chris, mate, tell your mate, he needs to buck his ideas up with his kick. In the last couple of games, is slack. And then he pings these two 70-yard through balls through. He almost got a couple of assists, he? did. He? Hernandez, was it? Oh, no, it was Murphy, wasn't it? And mm, was it Hernandez, yeah. the other one. But brilliant from... from go on. Third defining factor. Go on. The defence. Oh, I was then going to say... Absolutely, ridiculously outstanding. Arguably the best defensive performance of the season. Don't get me wrong, wrong there, there wasn't that much thrown at us. But as you've touched upon already, Jack, I thought that... The, the organised nature of, of, of the, the players was excellent. I thought Zimmerman was unbeatable. Mm. Hanley, again, unbeatable. Water is wet with him mm. now. It really is. Um, Timmy Kay as well. You know, you, it doesn't go without a miss. So I think when you've got such a consistent... I've said it multiple times this season, so I'm sorry if I'm boring everyone here, but there's been seasons I've supported Norwich where we've constantly switched the players over and over again, especially in defence. Yeah. And then we wonder why, we, why we're leaking goals. And now we've got this solid defence and we go to Derby County with some confidence mm. knowing that we're not going to leak tonnes of goals. And I think a player Touch that wood. we've missed out there, Harrison Reed stepping into right back so well. Yeah, I think, you know, don't get me wrong, I think Harry did, he did commit to a, he did a very midfielder-esque kind of commit in the early first half um, mm. which which arguably Middlesbrough should have scored from and they didn't luckily for us but yeah overall I, th- I think Harrison Reed he stepped in there really well and, and good for him um, I I hope um, I hope he continues to, to do that I think I do think Pinto is, is a better I don't agree with people saying that, that he's better than Pinto right back though I don't agree with that whatsoever no. and I, I don't think he'd be expected to he's a, he's a midfielder at the end of the yeah. day. although Daniel Farker did say hopefully he could be like Philip Lahm and switch from the holding midfielder into a, mm. into a wing back I was talking to a few guys in the office today about our lone players we just mentioned one of them Harrison Reid mm. um, Leitner Angus Gunn in past seasons we've had lone players that simply don't look like they care mm. We're, they're here for the money they're here to just boost their CV a little bit and then, yeah. I'll, then I'll go back. It is a fantastic um, kind of example of the current recruitment policy that we've had every single loan deal in this season. Low wages, mm-hmm. low risk, high reward, high mm. return. Mm. The loan deals have been brilliant, haven't they, so far? Absolutely. Again, you know, my, my opinion on loans has been changed. I used to hate them. You know, Glenn right, Rhodes' so. loans, my lord. Glenn Rhodes' mm-hmm. loans, my lord. But you look at the, the you know, the players we bought in. I mean, to touch on Angus, you know, he, he, is a, as an example of that. Mm. Ridiculous. How have we managed to do that? Mm. Honestly, on a serious note, how have we managed to do that? And the fact that, you know... Mark Leitner as well. 
that's to come. Yeah. And and that arguably might be the reason why we might reach the playoffs. Right. You're putting it out there. I'm putting it out there. Well, I suppose we are, what, eight points behind. There's what, 16 games left. It's definitely mm. achievable. All falls down to this month, though, Jack, as yeah. we've discussed it already. It's going to be a huge month. What did you make of us going forwards at the weekend? It's been the area which we've struggled in most, the area which arguably has cost us the most points this season. Still only one goal, and that mm. goal came from an absolute beauty from, from Tom Tribal. Mm. Any better? One thing I will mention before I go into the, into the attacking is I, I just need to compliment the fact that we're shooting from distance. Mm. I've supported Norwich for so long now, and, and you know. Although you, I did think we, we didn't do that at times at the weekend, especially in the first 30 minutes. Arguably should have done it more, yeah. but at least we are actually doing it. Again, you know, in previous seasons gone by, we would have tried to pass the ball into the net. But now, obviously, the players have been given that license by Farker to have a shot, and, and good for them. And I think Tom Tribal actually came out in his post-match pr- um, press conference and said, um, "I was just getting annoyed at the fact yeah. that we were trying to pass it around. So good for him, just have a pin." Mm. And that's what you need to do. I mean, it's yeah, it is disrespecting the Championship goalkeepers we're coming up against. They're not that good. No. Pepper shots on goal, they will make mistakes, and if they don't save it, it's going in. But if they do save it, you've got. You know, a Nelson Oliveira who will be there to follow it up. I thought just to go into the, into the way that we attacked, it was a to be improved. Yeah. It was. I think now that Lightner's in there, you know, causing all sorts of, of trouble. And, and you know, one of the things that, that Donna Killett, uh, who's a massive Nor- Norwich fan, said to me, um, Lightner, what he does very well is he passes the ball into space. Yeah. Wes does it, mm. but no one else really does that in the Norwich squad. And and. That's what I agree with her totally. I think Leitner is a, is a very good player and I think that he might open up more opportunities for Nelson Oliveira. You can slag off Nelson Oliveira's attitude all you want. I do think he had another decent game at the weekend. Yes, he didn't score. Um, you know, I, I do disagree with your opinion of him coming out wide. I think if Josh comes in central, Nelson needs to come out wide to make himself available to try and get the ball because if not, you've got no one out there and we've got no width whatsoever. So, if anything, I'm starting to place a wee bit more blame on Josh. Because I think I think Josh needs to be sticking <coughs> to his position more. Because otherwise, Nelson wouldn't need to go out there to get the ball. But look, you know, and to compliment Josh, I thought Josh was one of the reasons why the tempo was so good at the weekend. I thought Josh was good, yeah. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I did want him to go off a wee bit earlier for, for O'Neill. But that was just to add something different. I thought that Josh, he collected the ball very well. He, he imposed an attacking threat on them straight away, which he hasn't done in previous games. Um, and yeah, as I say, just passed the ball around really quickly and really nicely. Hernandez looked very good. He looks, Quick. He looks tasty, doesn't he? Yeah. Disappointed he didn't score that goal, though. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. I am. I, I, thought that, I thought it was a mega chance. Yeah. And he could have squared it. I didn't realise until I watched the highlights. But mm. line was in acres of space. At the Don't blame place. him for having a shot. No, no, not at all. But... It once again adds a slightly different element going forwards and that bit of just raw mm. pace that we've missed since we let Yannick Vilsker go. You need to let go of Yannick <laughs> now, can't. Jack. Why? I can't. Why? I'm just really struggling to, to get over it. You've obviously not watched him behind the scenes, have you? Look, he nearly scored for Cardiff at the weekend. Oh, fantastic. Let's get him back. I think Yannick Vilsker is a good player. I do. I think he's a decent player, mm. but he's very mid-table championship. And I know we're kind of mid-table championship right now, but I trust Daniel Farker and his observations, no. not you. <laughs> you don't trust me. And no. Why would you? Why would I? Why would you? So, <laughs> overall thoughts then. A good win against the Middlesbrough side. Uh-huh. We're going to be talking about the Derby game in a minute. But at least it's a home win under the belt. Almost, yeah. it was it was vital, wasn't it? And I know it was a tough Middlesbrough side, but that home mm. form was was getting to a point where mm. it wasn't looking nice. I think it gets the fans back on side. At, at, well, not that they were completely offside, to be fair. But I thought that you know that win brings a whole load of optimism. People now start to look up rather than down. People start to look at the Ipswich game and say, you know, if we if we beat Ipswich, if we beat Derby, we could be in with a shout of the playoffs, and that's mm. great. As long as we're all thinking that and there's that buzz around the club and there's that togetherness, we can actually have the opportunity of actually doing something. But I do think it is now, because of that win against Middlesbrough, we are looking at these next games saying there's an opportunity rather than let's take one game at a time. I'm now looking at that block. (coughs) That source is really getting to you, isn't it? That block of games, to me, if, if, if we win... Two, two of those three games in that block, mm. four if you include Bolton, 
Right. Why not? It is almost, though, the hope that kills, isn't it? Because... Oh, you know it is. We've been lured into these situations where it's kind of like we're being eight points, seven points yeah. off with a couple of winnable games. We're thinking, well, if we win them two, we could be three points, and then we eventually just go and lose. And mm. But it does feel like... Look, I'm not sure if we're going to get the playoffs this season. Like, it's a very outside chance, but it does feel, I think for the first time this season... 99% of the fans are on board mm. and we are moving in a direction which yeah. I'm happy with and also I look at this team even if we lose Gunn which we will do at the end of the season unless we go up if we lose Madison which is highly likely do you know that? I don't know that for, for fact but if we lose him which I think we will do and we? if we lose Madison which I think we will I'm still not that disappointing. I think we've got a real foundation to build from now and I think we've got mm. players to put in their missing pieces when players yeah. do eventually leave. Well, I think that's why we've signed Leitner, isn't it? Well, on a loan deal. But, Farker knows that he can find them loan signings again mm -hmm. and wrapping Tommy Tribal up on a, on, a, on a deal. And let's not forget, we've got Remy Matthews to come back. Mate, Leitner... And Godfrey uh, to come back. Leitner will sign a full-time deal. Do you think? Yeah, I do. Really? We're going to say Madison, aren't we? Yeah. I'll be stunned if... Madison stays at our football club in the summer. Don't get me wrong, it breaks my heart and I I want him to be at Norwich forever. Mm. But let's just be realistic. If you're Norwich City now, if you're Weber, if you're Delia, and someone slaps twenty five million pounds on the table and says, There you go mm. You know what though? I, I woke up the other morning. Oh, I think it was go. um I think it was a Friday morning actually. It was payday. And I was already quite excited because it was payday. Right. And I woke up and I just thought to myself Madison's staying, like genuinely, because I was thinking to myself, this is a man who's 21 years old, he's in his prime, or well, not in his prime, but he's performing well, okay? Look at Alex Pritchard, he's just gone to Huddersfield, he's playing for the under 23s today. Mm. If you make that wrong choice in your career at 21, mm. game over, Jack Rodwell, Sean Wright Phillips, etc, etc. cetera, et cetera. Madison, go, Madison spends another year in the championship, rips it up again, Boom. Value goes through the roof, and that's when you go into a Tottenham first team. I just I, okay, I'm behind you on that. But then I thought when it got to about midday, and you know things weren't looking good, <laughs> yeah, Madison's off for twenty million in the summer. We'll see. I hope he stays. Um, yeah. Right. Um, we thought we'd get into Twitter questions a bit earlier this week because we love them so much, Ooh. and we've got twenty nine of them to get through. If we ask them all. Um, so, let's start then with James Robinson. Now, this is the big question. Who do you think is the admin of the Norwich City WhatsApp group? And do you think the likes of Russ, Naismith and Yannick Vilsgut stay in the group while out on loan? I know who the admin is. Do you? Yeah. Who is it? Phil Lithgow, player liaison. Okay, player then. Well, no. That's, that's a fact. Well, no, let's, let's say... Phil's <laughs> the admin. And do the loan players stay in it? Well, yeah, they do. But when they go... They're out. And I know they get kicked out. Let's have a bit of fun with it. No. Well, if you didn't know, who would be the... Uh, I don't know. What's the point? I know the facts. I reckon it'd be Zimmerman. Sorry to poo-poo it, but you know. Zimmerman. He can't even... Well, he can talk English, actually, so fair play. Mm. John Killett. So, boys, would you rather lose to Ipswich but make the playoffs or beat <sighs> Ipswich but miss out on the playoffs? For me... Horrendous This is question. an easy one. Really easy one. Lose to Ipswich make the playoffs. Surely. No. No, I'm, I'm, a, no, I'm actually against it. Really? You wouldn't want to make the playoffs? I think that... Surely. Look, I think Norwich needs to have a season where... We, we, we recuperate. We, re, re, we recuperate. We whoop away. I think that, look, I don't, I don't ever want to lose to Ipswich, ever, full stop. And when it happens, and by the way, we are due a loss against Ipswich, mm. it's just going to hurt so much. And what the reason why I would rather win against Ipswich and not get in the playoffs is because this has been Ipswich's season. All of the Ipswich fans have been saying how brilliant they've been, you know, and how shit Norwich have been. This has been our worst season ever. You know, Norwich have been awful. We've been behind Ipswich. So to actually beat Ipswich at Carrow Road would mean so much to me and a lot, a lot of Norwich fans as well. But the thought of the playoffs surely is... No, I'm honestly, really? it, mate, it's beating the scum 
is 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 very very important. And actually, if we beat Ipswich, we might even have to have a chance of getting the playoffs anyway. To just change the question, like you can't be greedy. Well, I'm just changing the question a bit. For me, John, lose to Ipswich make the playoffs. Now, now this is a question here for um, for us from Elliot Waterfield, and he says, "I want to know what Chris's reaction is to the Borough Fan TV interview." Right. Now, you probably don't know what this is, do you? I honestly don't know. So, Borough Fan TV, Middlesbrough Fan Channel, actually a very professional fan channel. They're quite new. <laughs> okay. But there was a fan on there. You, you've had a lot of stick from past fan cams. This guy, he got a lot of stick from the Irish fans. Now, I'm going to link it down in the description below for you guys to go watch it. But I'm going to play it so you'll only be able to see the audio. We'll be able to see the picture as well. You'll be able to hear the audio. I just want you to watch this and, and just talk me through what you're thinking. You're, hang on, so you, are, there, are these guys going to be able to hear what I'm thinking while the audio is going on? And so I'll pause, pa- I'll pause it every so often. And then I can react. Yeah, so this guy is called, I think his name's AJ, okay? But you know that second half, if you don't change things, things aren't going to change. You're going to be watching just, just, just horrible football with no fight, because that's what it was. Where was the passion? You see this badge, man? Where was the passion to play for this club? Did on that pitch? Serious. Did anybody show it? Bollocks, no one showed it, man. Who showed it? Tell me who showed it. Who showed me? Tell me who showed the passion. I didn't see much out there. I seen a, a lot of desire and will to defend, but that's my opinion, AJ. What the hell are you defending? A one? You're going to beat 1-0? Why, why are you defending for? Do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's difficult to get out. Get out where the house? Oh, we mate. You don't, you don't, you don't defend. I, oh, come on. Are we? Come on now. Serious. You want 0 down, you attack. You attack, you go at the team. No, it's your crap, mate. Oh. You know what I mean? You've got holiday in. That shows how good the freaking stadium is, mate. You have to put that there just to make the stadium look good. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> look, so he's basically saying Norwich are a, a, a tin pot club okay. with a holiday in attack to the stadium to make it okay. look decent. To be fair, just to go back, I actually really, I, I actually agree with all of his points. There was no passion in that Middlesbrough side. Mm. There wasn't a player that was willing to step up to, to do it. I mean, the only player that had passion was the player that was a bit too passionate with his tackles, which mm. was Rudy Gastet. I thought, yeah, in, in terms of what he said there, up until the Holiday Inn, I, I'm with him. And when we've lost before, I've lost the plot. <laughs> and I've said, I've said some stupid stuff. But I think... I actually don't like the Holiday Inn. I really don't like the Holiday Inn. Right. And I agree with him. I think that it does look terrible. And No, but he's saying it's the only thing that makes the club look good. Yeah, and that, that's, that's, of course, ridiculous. But but then I think about it, I wouldn't want a stand there because I want that separation right. between okay. us so and we'll them. carry on anyway. So okay. you're agreeing with AJ so far? So far, yeah. It's... No, it's a crap. If you were in that hotel today, would you have kept the curtains closed, AJ? Too? Probably, yeah, probably. Um... Because there's nothing worth looking at, was there? Do you know what I mean? Norwich are rubbish, man. Norwich were crap today. Agree with that? Norwich are crap? Well, obviously we weren't crap, were we? Because we won the game. Well, so. according to him, we were crap. I completely disagree with that, obviously. Yeah. I don't need to start fighting this guy because he's absolutely lost it. <laughs> he's lost the plot. He has lost the plot here, isn't he? I don't care what any Norwich fans say. In the comment section, you can comment whatever you want. But I know, we all know, dead club. Yeah? You're 13 for a reason. What do you say, yeah? you We're a dead club. We're a dead club, says a Middlesbrough fan. Oh, I, I thought you were getting on the side of AJ. Well, he's he's now winding me up a little bit. Is he? You're a dead club, 13th in the league for a reason. You don't play in the Premier League. And when you do play in the Premier League, there's a reason why you go down the season after. But, there's a reason. Because it equals rubbish. But, but Middlesbrough... Look, look at this. We've been in the Premier League more than Middlesbrough. Mm. So what are they on about? Well, what was he on about? Dead club, 13th in the league Again, again, he's absolutely lost the plot. What's he going to say now? Come on now. People said, to, someone said to me, welcome to the best stadium, best stadium, that, you, the best stadium that you've probably ever seen. You're not been to the Riverside. Have you ever been to the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's really gone there. Really? First of all, there's nothing around We've got it. a Riverside. Yeah, and you know what? Our Riverside is better than their Riverside. Mm. And ours is a blooming retail park. Norwich, are we, mate? Come on, my first time here, and I don't ever want to come back. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. I hope he doesn't come back. Okay. Man, it's to be in this frigging town, man, or city, or wherever the hell you want to call it. This is a joke, man. <laughs> Seriously, five and a half hours to watch that. <laughs> I'm sorry to all the Borough fans I paid the money today. So, dead club, 13th in the I'm league sorry. for a reason, Riverside's better than Carrow. He's, he's just so frustrated, and I feel for him, because I've been there. I've, mm. I've felt that red mist mm. that, that, that he's feeling there. Mm. I, I just pity the guy. And actually, I said it. I actually feel sorry 
for the Middlesbrough fans that actually came to Caro to watch that because they gave nothing. Nothing. Um, and Southern Canary also said, can Chris Reeve and the AJT for Borough fan have a tin pot off whereby they, they both just insult the other clubs and the city for the full podcast? I don't watch. I actually don't think Middlesbrough are a tin pot football club at all. I'm, I'm being a good boy tonight. Mm. I don't. I actually don't think Middlesbrough are a tin pot football club. Do you think the Riverside's better than Caro though? God, no. No. Caro just character. Mm. Okay. Canary. Um, simply Canary. It's imperative that we keep Gunny. How much do you think Man City will ask for him if they're prepared to sell? I think we spoke about this last week, don't you? Uh, let's put it this way. I think if we were to actually sign Angus Gunn, you would probably be looking at spending all of the money that you'd get from Madison. I think it's an impossible move for the football club right now. Do I want it to happen? Of course I want it to happen. Um, I think the absolute best case scenario is that Angus stays for a second season. Mm. Um, but look, no, look I, I'm not a... You know, Angus has been amazing, but I'm not afraid of Angus leaving. We've got some fantastic goalkeepers in our ranks ready to step up. Remy Matthews, Aston Oxborough. And these are... I'm comfortable with it. Mm. I am comfortable with it. That we've got the players to step up. Jack Callow, not football related, but when did you and Chris meet? I think we've I think we've answered this before. This is quite cute. You, but, um, go on then, you respond. So, I'm not actually sure the first time we met face to face. I am. Okay. When was it? You were working for a, a former fan channel. Mm. And, um, fan think, site, not a channel. Yeah, sorry, fan site, mm. not channel. And uh, we won't get into that. Um, and I think I just literally just went up to you for an interview. Oh, was it a fan cam? Yeah, I think okay. I actually just had a fan cam and then the um, the connection just uh, blossomed mm. from there. Because really. you reached out to me on Twitter first, didn't you? Slash, we're brothers, actually. Cousins. Distant cousins. Um, yeah, and then, then we got a season ticket together mm. and our mm. friendship has, yeah. has, has flourished from Nor- there. Norwich City has um, brought us together. Indeed. And, Beautiful. And... and, and, and and separated us at times when we've it has mm. it has it continues to um, it does feel like I'm in a relationship with you actually sometimes Jack. yeah I know how to kind of push your buttons and yeah you do you know how to wind me up and mm. yeah yeah we both know how to wind each other up don't we mm. I only have to drop a little Yarmouth bomb in there and then it all goes pear shaped yeah but that's just factually incorrect oh here you go you, oh there you go when you, when you say bad things about Yarmouth okay right although there was a stabbing at the back pier the other night in one of the nightclubs. So, um, yeah, that's that's not good. Look out, kids. That, that's not good at all. Um, I'm just, sorry, there's so many questions. I'm just trying to... Um, well, let's try and read through them all then, Jack. Yeah, I am. Um, as soon as we've started... This is an tonight. interesting one that you've, you, you kind of touched on with your Ipswich answer. This right, is from James right, hang on, hang on, hang on. We need to get this right before the derby. Okay. Say Ipswich again. Am I saying it wrong again? You keep saying Ipswich. Ipswich. You say Ipswich with a G. So what? Ipswich. Ip. Swip. Ipswich. Ipswich. Better. Ips. I, I, Ipswich. Ipswich. You, see, you do. <laughs> Ips, I prefer Ips your switch. version, of course. Ipswich. There you go. Ipswich. Perfect. Okay, so Ip and then like... Just call them Ipswich. Ipswich is better. Ipswich. James McCarr, is the team ready for a Premier League football next season? Yes. Would it be more beneficial to wait another year yes. before we could put... You can't... Yes, to both of them. Yeah, okay. They're two different things. No, no, no actually, I, I think that the team that we've got now... Hmm would be capable of playing in the Premier League because of the fact that we'd get more space. Look at what we've done against Chelsea. Look at what, what we've done against Arsenal. I don't, I don't think they're ready to I thought to you said up. that you, you want to stay in this league to be Ipswich. 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 <laughs> Ipswich. Because we need another season of consolidation. No, 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 I just want to be Ipswich. Right, okay. But you'd still like to go up? Yeah, of course I would. You can't have both. Love the club. Love the game. Um, Tom Cash, with Manchester City spending £300 million on on just their defence and the titles of the top five leagues already decided in December, do you think it's time football clubs were restricted to the amount they can spend during a window? That's a a good question, actually. Um, Because that's right, Man City are going to win the Prem, Wolves are going to win the Championship, we're going to probably going to win League One and Luton are bloody 50 points clear in League Two. Yeah. Uh, there's a great shout. There's a great shout. Well, I think financial fair play is just a load of poppycock, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Absolute poppycock. Poppycock. You, you can't tell me that financial fair play is actually in place. No. It's a joke. Well, the, the governing bodies are corrupt anyway, aren't they? Which doesn't help things. 
I think it, it's a football is football is not becoming about the fans anymore. It is about the business and it is about the money. And there's such big deals on the table that you know sometimes you have to play, you have to buy big players for these sponsorship deals to come in. Does it depress you that Norwich City are probably never ever going to get in the top four of the Premier League? How do you know that? Well, it's probably not going to happen, is it? No, not really. Well, we might we might go into the top four in like the first game of the Premier League season. We're never going to go on a European run. We probably. might win the cup, mm, possibly, especially under Daniel Farker. Yeah, he next loves season. The cup. Yeah, oh, I love a European. You heard it here first. That is all I want. I've said it multiple times. I know, times I know, I know. You love it, don't you? You love the game. Would you take time off work to go watch us in like Europe uh, in like Russia? Don't ask me that question. Of course, I would. Of course, I would. Imagine the club cabbage points. The, by the way, the missus would be livid with that. Sorry, babe, just babe, 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 sorry, just uh, need to take a week off. All right, what are you doing? You're doing, doing the garden? <laughs> now nah, off to Russia, babe, with, with, with Revo. <laughs> what? <laughs> on, on Club Cabbage. Um, Ashley Bootle. We're eight points away from sixth. Bristol City, 16 mm. games left, 48 points up for grabs. Mm. Do Norwich have to avoid defeat in the next three games against Derby, Ipswich and Wolves to have any chance of the playoffs? I think we could probably afford to pick up three points against Ipswich and, and lose against Derby and Wolves. Okay. I still think we could make it even if we do that. Hmm. I think Derby is going to be really hard, really hard. And if we win against Derby, it, it's, it's... A draw would it, be great. It, oh, yeah, I'd bite your hand off for a draw now. As I've said multiple times, just win against Ipswich and the momentum comes yeah. and it and it starts rolling mm. look Wolves is going to be impossible right off mm. absolutely right off honestly I think if we lose 2-0 I'll be happy mm. that's where we're at with Wolves I think I think the big thing is is this or historically this season we've done well against the bigger teams mm. you know away from home especially it's the it's the it's the Burtons at home it's the Burtons away it's them games at home we should have should have been winning early doors I think we could probably. I think a draw against Derby would be lovely. It gives you that bit of momentum going into Ipswich. I think, yeah. like Chris said, right Wolves off. Don't expect anything, anything more than, than zero points is a positive. But it's, we've got then, it's then the Bolton game, which is going to be crucial. Mm, yeah. Because, yeah. That's, know, where, in a little bit that's where it's decided. That's where it's decided. You that win game. that, and you could possibly go on and win a few more games. Mm. And I think the next three games, I think four points would be beautiful from the next three games. Anything less? Look, I don't think we're going to get the playoffs. It's definitely possible. It's not written exactly. off yet. It's going to be tough. Do I think we can? Do I think we have the consistency to go on a run? No, not at the moment. I think in spells we look really good, mm-hmm. but I don't think the consistency is there look, just yet. Beat Ipswich, beat Bolton, and let's just say if we get anything out of Derby and Wolves, fantastic. Yeah. As long as we win against Ipswich and against Bolton, we're still in with a shout of the playoffs. Yeah. Carl Layton simply says Manson no socks. Oh, Carl Layton, what a man. From the, man, the myth, course. the legend. Yeah, Mystic Manson rocked up at the at the game uh, the weekend with no socks on. Yeah. I mean, it's just terrible from him. Yeah. Really schoolboy. T- terrible. Although the, he had invisible socks on, didn't he? And what is that? Come on. Invisible socks. They're the ones that are kind of like, they don't have a top. Of the I think it all sounds very questionable to me. <laughs> um, Tom asks, "Who does now?" This is a good question. Actually, I was thinking about this today. Who does Lightner replace in the starting eleven if there were no injuries? He he's got to start, in my opinion. It raises a good question, doesn't it? Because that midfield, who do you drop? It'd be harsh on anyone. Do you take out a central defensive midfield and just play with that? To- play with Tommy T. I think that's risky. But mate, I, the, the way I see it at the moment is we're so defensively sound. You you do need to start to push it the other way now. And you do need to start to you do need to start to strain that defence because we're not doing anything up top. Nelson needs support. Nelson needs support, mm. and he's going to be here, right? So we've got to give him something. And Nelson isn't a player that thrives playing up front on his own. He doesn't. The problem is though, we've talked about it at times this season. That- at times we've, we've looked very disjointed between the attack and the defence mm-hmm. and it's Tom Tribal and, and it's Alex Tete that have linked that up quite nicely at mm-hmm. times. So if you take a Tete out or you take, you wouldn't take a Tribal, well maybe you do take Tribal out no. because 
Yeah, but he, Take I'm, I'm, I'm talking about his ankle. He was saying his, his ankle. Oh, yeah, okay. So if say if he is injured, is Leitner? I don't really know. Is Leitner a central I, defensive? Honestly, I do. I, I have a conspiracy theory. Right. Conspiracy theory is, in fact, I don't think it's a conspiracy theory. I really don't. I think we've signed Leitner on loan. Yeah, with a view to buy in the summer, and I think the reason why that's happening is we are pretty. We pretty much know that Madison's going to go. So for me, Leitner get some, you know, adapt to the English game for the for this half of the season, for the remainder of the season, bed in nicely, get to know the style of football, the squad, and then he just replaces Madison. So going back, uh, and that actually links into Matt Gregory's question, who asks, we'll go back to Tom in a minute. Would you sell James Madison in the summer if Moritz Leitner was his replacement? I mean, if then maybe it's it's too early to decide on, on Leitner. So in terms of dropping a player, no. are we sticking with the same formation? At home, no. We're changing it. Look, as I've said, at home, I think we need to bring the game to teams more. That was what Daniel Farker said that his team was all about. And, you know, look, fair play to Daniel. He has shored up the defence and I really respect it. I admire the job that we're doing defensively at the moment. Mm. We look so sound, so calm, so collected, so organised. We don't look like we're going to concede goals. But you can't have that luxury constantly, 10 out of 10. You need to give something to the forward line. Something. You can't just expect Nelson to feed off scraps and then just slag him off every game because he's but not isn't, scored. isn't that the job of Madison, Murphy and whoever else plays, Hernandez or someone? Uh, I think that, um, yeah, yeah, I think it is Madison's job. I think that Tommy T can easily unlock Madison into games. I think anyone can unlock Madison into games. He's the player that can float around. Mm. For me at the moment, I think one of the, although I've said Josh Murphy played really well, I think that I'm not sure about Josh and Nelson. I just, and I'm not sure if that's the best attacking impetus for us. I would really like to see what Big D brings to the table. In terms of, I'm not saying he's going to be fantastic and he's going to score goals, but I'd like to see how we play with Big D in there. So in terms many. of, can we get away a bit more with with playing it long? Mm. Can he bring other players in? Mm-hmm. Will he not just drift out wide whenever he wants to? Because that was really starting to get to me now. Like, really getting to me. But our wide players aren't staying out wide. Yeah, but it, when Nelson drifts out our wide, wide there's no one in the box. Wide. That's not Nelson's job. If Murphy isn't going out wide... So you just want him to stand there? Fault. So you just want yes, him to I stand do. there? Yes, I do. And I let want, the ball I go out? to operate in his role. And let the ball go there out There will play. be someone there. The reason Murphy's drifting into the middle is because there's no one there. Because Nelson's gone out wide. What the hell? Madison's there. Josh has no need to go out into the Nelson middle. needs to stick to his role. And his role is I, to play as a I lone think... striker, not as a wing. Nelson. It's greed. It's greed. Oh, that's bull. It that's is. bull. He wants the ball. Look. Yeah, yeah. Of course he wants the ball. He's Don't a striker. Wait for the ball. Don't slag him off, wait man. Wait for the ball. Look, I'm willing to give Nelson until the end of the season. So what happens to Big D, then? We just let him rot on the bench? No. Listen, Jackie Ring. <laughs> For me, we need to play two up top at home. Okay. We do. So, who, do you drop Madison? No. Who do you drop? You drop a centre defensive midfielder. And you learn, and you learn to play that risk. A defend together, attack together. Plenty of teams do well, it, mate. Timmy Closer does it. Plenty of teams do it. Timmy Closer's out on the left bloody wing, so why can't we have two up top? Have some, have some Doritos. Look, at, look at the teams of, of Norwich's past... The teams that have been promoted, two up top. Connor, could you see the team we've currently got being able to sneak into the playoffs next season? That's if we don't scrape it this season. Definitely. Do you think we need to strengthen more in the summer? Yes and yes. I think... Yeah, I was... This is what I was saying earlier. Even if we let Madison go, even if we let Angus go, even if we let Tim Close go, I'm still very confident from what I've seen... We've let since Daniel Farker's been here, we've let go of Johnny Howson, um, Alex Pritchard, Ruddy, Bennett, Ruddy, maybe not Ruddy, but they probably weren't as influential. Who else did we let go in the summer? Mur- Jacob Murphy, the toilet cleaner, the chief executive, <laughs> the kitchen porters. Star. Yeah, um, we've let go of everyone. Yeah, and we've and we've pretty much recouped. Like, yeah, we've done okay at finding replacements for less money. Mm. You bring a Madison, you, you sell a Madison for twenty odd million. That gives you a little. It wouldn't all be reinvested into into players. We know that, but ten million of it might. 
that might get a line that might mm. get a, a, well, would. a, a league one player. It would. Um, and I'm confident in the current recruitment strategy to be able to find replacements for players we let go. So th- for me, that gives me confidence going into next season because I thought, well, if we don't do it this season, it's going to be so tough because we lose all of our core. We've now got a core that will be here next mm. season. Your Christoph Zimmermans, Angus your Tom Tribals. Possibly not Angus. If you keep Angus next season, you're in with a shout at the playoffs. Well, we'll probably win the league by March in that case. <laughs> this time next year, we'll be celebrating. With more than bloody Doritos. I think we'll go up next season. What about this season? Maybe. I, I know we'll go up next season. We'll do it both. Why not? Chris. Yes. It's that time of the week. Of course it is. Willem Otz! Woo! Willem Otz Limited back in the game. Has he got a new header? Yes! Oh, here he is again and again and again. Another one. This week it looks like a wintry bowls court. Oh my. Yeah. Look at the patterns there. Such fine trimmings. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't mess around, does he? No. He does not mess around. No, he doesn't. The daily life of a contract groundsman. Come rain, rain or, or shine, shine or sun. sun. Weeds will always outgrow grass. Yes. We yeah. now know it off by heart. Um, I really like this photo, actually. Danny has been learning to spray iron onto oh, okay. bowling greens. Hang, hang on. Hang, whoa, whoa, whoa. Has he got an apprentice? Mate, he's got a whole team of workers. This is Danny spraying iron onto the bowling greens. Oh, wow. I think this might actually be the bowling green that's in his header. That is a stunning piece what? of machine. Oh, all that noise. Yeah. That is so special. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, Danny was doing the bowling greens and he was doing it at Rackheath. Great day for topping the bowling greens. Just had these set by Danny from Rackheath, which have looked we've looked after in the next for the last two years. Wow, that's a big um, deal. I mean, again, you know, Willemots, we, we're we're ready. We are ready. Are we're you ready, ready Willemots? Are you ready for the sponsorship, Willemots? Phone me. Phone me. Um, oh, you also got some cracking photos of the supermoon as well. Oh, I mean, again, just Willemots being Willemots. Isn't it? Stinks of talent, this man. Um, What's he saying this he's week? He's saying, I might be on my own here, lads. Ooh. But can we try and keep Teddy for one more year? Give him the captain's arm bad permanently. Mm. Knees might be shot, but can organise all of our great new players and loves the club. Saturday felt like the club with a heart again. Yeah, agreed with the whole club. Look, I'm Tete's biggest fan. When he, you know, when when we signed Tete, he was my favourite player. He was everything we needed in the middle of the park. I think it's time we let go. Mm. He's on mega money. We've got Tom Tribal there. We've got we we we've got you know players. Look, Tommy T. If he behaves himself and keeps his head down, he could easily replace Tete. Mm. Tete, like Cameron Jerome, like John Ruddy. He's just done his time. Yeah. He's a lovely bloke. He really loves Norwich City. We've given him so much. He'll openly admit to that. I just think it's time to, to, for him to change. And I think the big thing that people forget, he's still probably on a lot of money. And, yes, definitely. And like a Ruddy, look, Ruddy, when he left, he was okay. He'd done a job. He was he, he'd done fantastically well for the football club. He loved the fans. The fans loved him. I think with Ben Godfrey coming back next season, it would be stupid to keep hold of Tete when you've got a youngster ready to bed in there. Mm. So yeah, I think, agreed. Tete, I love you, but go back to Norway and just, you know, Chill put out. your feet up. Yep. Maybe play a couple of games every other week Hot from, from Malmo or someone. Yeah. No, they're Swedish, aren't they? What? FC Oslo, maybe? Oh, is, that, is that a thing? I don't know. Um, love him, though. I wouldn't give him the captaincy either, by the way. No. I that goes to Kristoff. I... Yeah. Or uh, Hanley. Can well, we just can we just have two captains armbands? Can mate, we split talk the, something about Hanley? Can again? we split the captains armband just, in half? Just speak just, to me about Hanley. I just Hanley. Ugh. Look, he literally survived a possible ankle breaking. He just got back up. Rudy Castell throws all of his body weight at his ankle, and he just gets up. I think he's made of. I think he's got like a steel skeleton. I don't think he's human. And I don't think no. I don't, honestly don't think he's human. Humans don't throw he- their head Again, like Jamal Lewis's leg, mm. I'm going to be worried when Grant Hanley goes through a drugs test because yeah. I think the guy is just ridiculous. Yeah. It's getting ridiculous now. Mm. I'm, you know what? I'm actually starting to, to wonder what the hell Newcastle were thinking. Mm. What were they thinking? Mm. Newcastle fans slagged them off big time when we signed them. What is that all about? Or maybe Hanley 
He's just going for it. He just wants it more. And he's thankful for the fact that we're giving him a permanent position in the team. And good on him. I genuinely good wouldn't him. be shocked if I was walking down a, a street in, in Norwich and just saw Hanley like... Rugby tackle someone his head out of nowhere. Bus yeah. Yeah. To stop it. Well, no, no, no. Um, yeah. From hitting an old lady. He could push a bus easily, couldn't he? Yeah. I think, I think when I first figured out Hanley was slightly nuts was when I went to an under-23 game. I think it was against Reading at home. Mm. And he hadn't played... It was before the Ipswich game. He hadn't played for the first team yet. You just said Ipswich. Before the Ipswich game. Oh, you said Ipswich again. Oh, Ipswich. I, well need, to, I need to practice that. Yeah. He comes on in this under-23 game, I think as a sub. <laughs> and he's playing against this like 17-year-old striker, okay? <laughs> and he just... The referee's turned his back. And... I think Aston's just kicked it long. Yeah. And Hanley's running kind of out. So that the ball's now up the other Has he just the cla- absolutely collapsed him like he's a horse? And no, the referee's got his back turned and Hanley just chucks an elbow in this guy's face and just puts him to the ground. And I was like, this guy's ruthless. <laughs> I mean, on a serious note, you would not want to see Hanley down the dark alley. Oh, no. no. My lord. If you're going down Prince of Wales, you want Hanley with you, not I mean, against look, you. I mean, let me put it this way. If the club said you can have Grant Hanley on the podcast, I would say no. <laughs> I'm too scared of him. Mm. I honestly think I if think we he... said one thing bad, he would genuinely beat the shit out of us. Yeah. Or maybe he's just a lovely guy but just loves headering things. I just he just he does seem a bit he crazy. He's a beast. He's a beast. No, from the he's east. not crazy. Tim Close is crazy. He lost his head again at the weekend. Tim Close always loses his yeah. head. But I love him for he it. He loves it, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, Cameron, long time no speak. Cameron, how are you, my friend? Um, hope you're well. Just wanted to get your thoughts on Louis Thompson. Mm. I thought highly of him since he joined from Swindon. Mm. Showed his excellence before a terrible double injury. Do you think there's any way back for him into the Norwich City eleven? Another midfielder. I hope so. I hope so. And again, reason why we, we need to let Tete go. Louis Thompson highly rated by lots of the backroom staff at the football club. The players respect him. Uh, again, just to draw back to a, a couple of pre-seasons ago, we looked at him and went, beast, mm. absolute beast. For me, would love to see him come back yeah, into this I would, team. I would love to. I think as well as physically, which he'll probably struggle a little bit with, is mentally. Can he deal with being out of the game for two years? I don't know. I hope so. Mm. Phoebe, if you had to cook a three-course meal, get flicking through this, Okay. what would you cook and what current Norwich City player would you invite and why? Christoph Zimmerman for me. He's coming over. And I'm cooking him. We're going to have... Can you have curry burst as a main meal? What? Curry burst. You know, like it's like that sausage and kind of like curry sauce. And you okay. have like You're a, going for the German, are you? So I'm having curry burst as a main. Okay. As a starter, I'm going to get my mum to make some sweet pea hummus. Okay. I feel he needs to have that. And then for dessert, I'm going to get... I think I might make him some trifle. Right, okay. Or I'd go... I know, actually. I know what I'm doing. I'm going down to Yarmouth Market. Yeah, okay. I'm getting him some cockles. Oh, that's a fantastic shout I'm getting him you. some pie and... That just got Pie good. and mushy peas. Okay. And then I'm... Oh, what dessert can you get off Yarmouth Market? Pick and mix? Bugger all in Yarmouth. Yeah, really not much it? dessert for choice, is there? Okay. Who are you inviting? So, I'm going for... Tom Tribal. Tommy T. Yeah, and I think he's the kind of guy... I mean, I've looked at his Instagram. I've gone back. Long barnet, round glasses. Yeah. I'm starting to think he's like a really quirky, cool, really hip guy. Okay, and that's so you. And I'm so fine with that. So fine with that. So, here we go then. So, I'm going for some wacky food out of Delia's cookbook here. Fair Delia. play, mate, for finding three... Have you found three courses? Yeah, three courses. In that time. <laughs> that's impressive, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. So, first of all, I'm going for... Chilled avocado soup. Oh yeah, chilled avocado, avocado soup. soup. Yes, two medium ripe avocados, one clove of garlic crushed, a tablespoon of lemon juice, soured cream, Greek yogurt, salt and pepper. Happy days. You know what? Quite a thick, quite a thick consistency. I'm, I'm, I'm going for chilled avocado soup because again, we just want to keep Tommy T healthy. Yeah. But he's the kind of guy that wants to be light on his feet. He doesn't really want to be trudging around too much. No. Chilled avocado soup for the starter. We then go on to the main. Mm. Here, we're taking Tom back to his roots. Okay. Just chicken in the pot. 
Is that, is that his virtue? Chicken in the pot. It's associated with Henry VIII of, of what? who? <laughs> Why is it saying Whose ambition room? was that every family in his kingdom might be able to afford to eat this dish every Sunday. So it's a staple. Again, Delia's complete cookery course. We'll take the invoice. Thank you very much, Delia. Um, Over six million copies sold worldwide. Ch- by the way, class businesswoman. Absolute yeah. class. Kudos, Del. 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 Um, yeah, chicken in the pot, main course. <coughs> right, okay. This is a terrible Is that podcast, simply chicken it? in a pot? Yeah, it literally says here. Actually, here we go. So we've got chicken, bacon, 12 button onions. We've got some carrots, turnips, garlic, parsley, celery. You know, you've got those kind of ingredients that really just make a German tick. <laughs> Chicken in the pot for Tommy T. We then go on to dessert. Now, I'm interested in this. Are you? Okay. And I, I, you know what? I'm going to have to change it because I've just changed my mind really quickly. Oh. Yeah. One moment. Keep, keep talking. Talk amongst ourselves. Interested that you think that parsley is a German staple food. I'm just... No, I'm just... I just think that it, just Germans love it, don't they? Well, they love... German efficiency. I can kind of see chicken in yeah. the pot being quite an efficient dish. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Come on, mate. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh Jesus, we're 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 really in there now. Okay. Are we in deep? Oh look, oh Lord, we are in deep. Wow. You're gonna have to pick one in the next five seconds. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, you know what? I'm really struggling here. Okay. I've I've changed my mind. I've absolutely lost it you've, here. You've bottled it. I've a big moment. Absolutely bottled it. So um, here we go. go. I've got it. Fresh lemon cheesecake mm. with frosted grapes. Frosted grapes? Fresh lemon cheesecake with frosted grapes. Delia's The Complete Cookery Course. Still an all-time bestseller. Yeah. This is a fresh-tasting and lighter than the other cheesecake recipes given in this book and looks attractive Ooh. with clusters of frosted grapes. Now, That's I think, almost like Tom Tribal. Light and attractive. I'm just thinking Tommy T loves grapes. Oh, really? Yeah, I just, I just reckon he'd love it. What makes that lighter than the average cheesecake? Is it kind of the, you don't, don't use know. mascarpone cheese? Or? Uh, we've got here four ounces of digestive biscuits. Yeah, so that's the Cottage base. cheese. Base, base, buttery biscuits. Hello. Base. Cottage Half cheese. Half an ounce of powdered gelatine. Oh, hello girls. Two large egg yolks. Egg Pasta yolks? the sugar, lemon, I don't know. Anyway, Tommy T, oh, cheers. Nice one. Um, Leeds, they sacked their manager. Charlie Sop saying Paul Hecking bottom to Leeds. Any thoughts? Cool. Cool story, bro. You don't like Leeds, do you? If you honestly ask me that question one more time, I'm going to punch you in the face. Are Leeds falling apart again? I actually like Leeds. You, you are the one that don't, doesn't like Leeds. I'm fine with Leeds. Yeah, I'm fine. It's with interesting Leeds. to see they decline though this season, isn't it? Yeah, because they looked decent when they came to us. Mm. To be fair, mm. they did, didn't they? I, I can't even remember what's the score. I think. I, even, I think they. When do we play Leeds? Then you. Then you crest. By the way. Talk to me about Oh, that. they backtracked. Oh, they? my Lord. What a royal piss-up that was. Who was on the marketing team there? What Sack are they them. doing? Sack them. It's almost as bad as the Ricky Van Wolf's thing called Wolf marketing campaign. It is worse because it's your club's crashed. Yeah, that's true. Um, Lewis Fuller, what's the best thing about Carrow Road? I want this in one word. And I want it quickly. One word? Yeah. Or, or one phrase. Character. Character. City centre. That's not one word. Well, it's one. That's two of, words. It's one, Try again, Jack. That's central. One. Because a lot of the stadiums. One you go good thing to, about Carrow Road. Central. Yeah, but like Jack, what Cold are you Chester on about? You go to and you're bloody four miles out of the city. All of the words you pick and you pick central. Yeah, because it's, you it's the, the hub t- of the city. You're the reason why the, this city is pedestrianised, aren't you? Central. Oh, well, yeah, on. I think it's a very good thing. It saves on emissions. It. The flow, the flow of traffic through Norwich is far better. <laughs> oh, please. Oh, please don't. Is it not? I don't, I don't drive through Norwich. Lord, I walk now because I'm... Because it's so bad. No, it's pedestrianised. <laughs> you really have lost right, it. Right, I think that is all of the questions. Mm. Um, Derby at the weekend. Mr Jerome will be leading their line probably next to the championship shop. Championships <laughs> top scorer Vidra. Mm. Confident? No, no. I think it'll be a very cagey game. I think we will 
defend relatively well. It's going to be hard, though. We're going to have... I think it's going to be different because I think they're going to keep the ball on the floor, these boys. And I don't think this, this current defence have played against the team, really, that want to keep the ball on the floor mm. and, play it, and play it quickly mm. in that space between the, middle, the midfield and the defence. I don't think we've yeah. played against that type of side yet. So it's going to be hard. I think Cameron Jerome will score. And if he scores, OK. I hope he doesn't celebrate. I know he won't celebrate because he's a good boy like that. Um, but yeah, look, again, I'd bite your hand off for a draw. I really do. I think Derby, in my opinion, are, are, are actually in for, for, for the automatic spots. Yeah. And I, I, really I, kind, I kind of hope they do because they've been knocking around the playoffs and the automatics for so long and they always yeah. seem to screw up. I think this season could be their season. Although, mm. Villa, very close behind them. This is a big game for Derby. They very lose, true. They lose against us, Villa could overtake them. And Villa is a very good shout as well. But I mean, I, I was actually talking to the Ramble, the new Derby County fan channel before this podcast, Jack, and just oh, talk... Oh, shit, I've dropped them. Oh, dear. Okay. Oh, no. Got it back? Mm. Good. Um, what was I talking about? You've really put me off there. Ramble. I'm talking to a Derby County. Um, oh, it's gone. Absolutely gone. What are you talking to him about? I was talking about the game, Derby. <laughs> what, what, we, what was your question? Where were you? Villa. But right behind them. No, it's gone. Gone? Absolutely gone. Bradley Johnson's injured. Thank God for that, because he was definitely going to score as well, yeah. wasn't he? It would have been 2 0 Jerome and Johnson, wouldn't it? <sighs> definitely. Um, I think this is going to be a very good test to see where we're currently at. Yeah, you agreed. Know, agreed. How good is Lightner going to be against them? How good is Madison going to be against them? How good yeah. is our defence going to cope? This is going to be a good test. I'm looking forward to it. That doesn't mean I'm confident. I'm just mm. looking forward to being really challenged away from home. Yeah. I think this could be our we're toughest away, away game. We're yeah, good I away know. From home. But how good are we? Mm. Let's see how good we are. Let's see if Farker maybe switches the tactics up a bit. Let's see if an Hernandez can make an impact. This is an exciting game for me. Yeah. Also quite a big game because you, <clears throat> you never want to be going into a into a derby game, not the derby game or yeah. the Ipswich game. Ipswich off the back of a loss. You don't want to be doing that. Well, it doesn't matter if we do because we'll, we'll beat Ipswich anyway. Um, and Ipswich are at home, I think, to Burton this weekend. So they'll probably win. They'll get some momentum there then, yeah. Exactly. So, you know. Interesting. The narrative is all set up. Mm. Chris, it's been a good one. Thank you. Um, we've eaten a lot. Standard. We're probably going to get loads of hate for that, but you know. Yeah. Um, if you're listening on iTunes, please do leave us a review. If you're listening on YouTube, <laughs> click through on the description below and leave us a review. Mm. Any final words? James Madison, believe the hype. Mm. Willemots Limited, believe the hype. <laughs>